A video camera. Okay. Hare Krishna, Dhanabad Pranam, Dhanabad Pranam. Hare Krishna. So better all uh, switch uh, switch off uh, mic. Who is the translator? Uh, Mataji, Lakshmi Priya. Okay. Uh, both the sister. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. We are using a free trail, so this is 30 minutes. We have to continue again, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Okay. So we can begin? Yes, we can begin. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Payevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this this year 2020 has been very very special unlike any other year in the past 100 years there's been very serious problem with the virus around the whole world affecting everyone you do day um 2020 you say it's a special birthday because um go so this situation for some people it's very difficult because their movement is greatly restricted children cannot even go to school children have to stay at home and older people are very much in danger because the disease can be fatal for older people, if they get the disease, most older people die because their bodies don't have the resistance to fight the disease. So for older people, 
it's also a problem. Many older people, they're afraid to go out. They just stay in the home and they've been staying in the home for months. And then other people, ordinary working people, they, they're often they're not able to go to work. Many jobs, the business is closed down and they told them, don't come, no work. So there are many serious economic problems for people that they're not able to earn money. So the fortunate people are the people who have some land. If they have some land, they can grow their own food, they can grow their own vegetables, they don't have to depend on others. So nowadays we are seeing some places where people had land and they were not doing anything with the land, the land was just sitting empty. Now they're starting to use the land and they're starting to cultivate. They planted some fruit trees and they grow some vegetables. Many people in India are from the villages. And with this pandemic, with this virus, they had to all go back to their village. And when they get back to their village, they find it's better for them to be in the village than to be in the city. Because in the village, they can easily maintain themselves. They can grow some food, they have some tree, they have coconut tree, they have some banana tree, they have some simple things and they're able to live without any problem. But in the city, it's a problem. Now, what about devotees? For devotees, the problem is that, you know, temples are closed. We, we cannot go to any temple. We just have to stay at home. Temples are not having any public programs. So usually people depended a lot on going to temple. They like to go to temple, see the deities, take part in the kirtan, hear the lecture and take prasadam. But now they're not able to do that. So now people are seeing the importance of having their own temple in their home, having their own altar and offering their food to their, maybe having the deity or pictures and they offer 
everything there in their home and they do RT at home. And they can hear the lectures if if they have the mobile phone, then they can use their mobile phone to listen to lectures online. So many different devotees are giving classes and we are able to hear the lectures. But better is that they, when they are at home, they read the books themselves. If they read the book and study themselves, that will be even better than just sitting and hearing. Now, many devotees, they are at home, they have the opportunity to read to go through the book. Of course, it's difficult for some people, like in Burma, people in Burma, you don't read English, they don't read, maybe not so familiar to read Hindi, but you, know, you have to try to get some Burmese book. <laughs> Uh, you have at least the Bhagavad Gita in Burmese. If you only know the Burmese language, Bhagavad Gita is there. You can simply read Bhagavad Gita. And then you have also magazine, Back to Godhead magazine in Burmese language. That's also there, se several editions. Back to Godhead magazine so even one book like Bhagavad Gita, if you simply study it carefully from cover to cover, you can sp you can make your life perfect. There's so much to be studied in the Bhagavad Gita. There's 800 verses there, 800 slokas in the Bhagavad Gita. We can memorize the slokas. If we ask people, how many slokas do you know in the Bhagavad Gita? How many do they know? Maybe four or half a dozen, hardly any. There's 800 slokas in the Bhagavad Gita. Then in Prabhupada's purports, there's so many important slokas from the Srimad Bhagavatam and from other scriptures quoted in the purports. We can also learn these. So just studying Bhagavad Gita was given great importance. Shankaracharya had said, 
that if one studies the Bhagavad Gita and drinks a little water of Ganges, he can get liberation. So there's no harm to just study one book, Bhagavad Gita, that one book, I think that's the, the final verse in the, the Gita, the, the Gita Mahatmya, it says that if there's only one book then, and one God and one mantra, then that will be perfect for everybody. If there's only one book, the Bhagavad Gita, and only one God, Krishna, and only one mantra, Hare Krishna mantra, then it's very good. Everybody can, will get the greatest benefit. So this lockdown, people may say, oh, it's very bad, but there's some very good things happening with this lockdown. There are two sides to everything, two sides to everything. On one side there is hot, other side will be cold. Right, we heat, the heat of the summer is oh very hot, very unbe, but then the cold of the winter is also <laughs> difficult. So happiness is followed by distress. Distress followed by happiness. Just like we're all suffering with the lockdown, but there's some good things also coming from the lockdown. Some good things are people now have time to sit and chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Before they did not have any time, but now nobody can say I have no time. Now everybody's got time. So there's two sides to everything. Just like the coin, there's the one side, there's two sides to the coin, they toss the coin. So there's two sides, there's happiness on one side, there's distress on the other side. And so the distress is followed by happiness. Just like we were in distress because the, the river Yamuna was so polluted. There was so much garbage, so much pollution in the rivers. But now the river Yamuna has become very clean, very nice. In so many ways, the environment, the nature has benefited by this lockdown because so many factories, so much industry had to stop. So, 
फैक्ट्रीहरू बन्द हुनेको कारण निकै हामीलाई हामीको यो पृथ्वीमा तपाईँ फाइदा भइरहेको छ Yeah, these these factories, these industries, they only produce so many things for our sense gratification. Because of all the the things produced in the factories. We become attached to material sense gratification, and we lose our Krishna consciousness. Of course, people will say. Oh now I I cannot go to Holy Dam I have to stay in my place I can't go to the Holy Dam so it's not good for me but you can make the Holy Dam in your own place It's not necessary that we have to go all the way to India and to visit the holy dam. We we just need to stay in our own place and be Krishna conscious there. We can make our home a holy dam by. chanting of the holy name by worshiping krishna and by reading the books about krishna in this way our home will become a holy place ani hamile aafno ghar lai kasari dham banana sakinchha ta bhanda keri bhagwan ko ketan bas garnu bhagwan ko kitab padnu ani bhagwan ko puja garnu eseri hamile aafno ghar lai bhagwan ko dham banana sakinchha krishna consciousness is in the heart of everyone We don't say Krishna consciousness is only in the holy dam. Krishna consciousness is in the heart of everybody. Yo Krishna bhavana mitra chha to har vyakti ko hriday ma chha. Yo aina ki Krishna bhavana mitra dham ma mati chha. Yo har vyakti ko hriday ma chha. We have to know how to awaken that Krishna consciousness and the process is through hearing. अनि हामीले चाहिँ यो कृष्ण भावना मृत हामीको जो हृदय भित्र छ यसलाई कसरी जगाउने त भन्दाखेरि सुनेर सो लर्ड चैतन्य गेव ग्रेट इम्पोर्टेन्स टु हियरिंग अनि भगवान चैतन्य महाप्रभुले चाहिँ एकदम सुन्नको लागि चाहिँ एकदम महत्त्वपूर्ण दिनु भएको छ सुन सुन्नको लागि चाहिँ वी कैन रीड इन चैतन्य चरितमृत हाउ लर्ड चैतन्य मेट रामानंद राय ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ द गोदावरी So he asked Ramananda Rai, "Give me some verse from the scriptures about the goal of life." Ani sunnu unje chetan yama ha prabhu le Ramananda Rai Rai lai ki yo jivan ko hamer ko goal ki uta mande sunnu unje tis ko ba tis ko. So Ramananda Rai said, "Oh, Varnashram." He quoted a verse from the Puranas, which said, "If you follow the duties of Varnashram, then you get perfection. You please the Lord." And so Lord Chaitanya said, "Well, that is external. Externally, you may be a good brahmana. Externally, you're a good brahmachari. And th these things, this is only the external. What, what about the internal?" So then Ramananda Rai gave a verse from Bhagavad Gita, 
about offering the results of everything, karmarpana, offering the results of the work to Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya said, well, you may offer to Krishna, you may offer sometimes to Shiva, you may offer to Durga, you may offer to so many people. So then he said, give some other reason. So then Ramananda Rai said a verse about surrendering everything, giving up all duties and surrendering to Krishna. Right. 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharma Parigyasna. The Lord Chaitanya said, no, he said, because people, sometimes people, they'll surrender for some other reason. They don't really want Krishna consciousness, they just want to avoid doing their duty. Some people become the monk, they become, they come to live in temple because they I'll get good prasadam every day, good place to sleep, good place to eat. So Lord Chaitanya said, no, you have to go higher than this. So then Ramananda Rai gave a verse from Bhagavad Gita about uh, Jnana Mishra Bhakti. Right. Brahma Buddha Prasanatmanasochati param. This is the verse. One who knows he's the Brahman, he's a joyful soul. He understands I'm not the body, he's a joyful soul. He does not hanker, he's not anxious to get anything, he doesn't lament about what he lost. He controls his mind. But Lord Chaitanya did not like that either because there's a tendency towards impersonal liberation. Lord Chaitanya wanted to hear about pure devotional service. So then Ramananda Rai gave a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Gyani praya samudapasta namanta eva jivanti san mukaritam bhavadiya vartam stane stita shruti gatantan van manobir ye praya so jita jitopi asita istrilokyam. This verse in Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto spoken by Lord Brahma to Krishna. <laughs> And Lord Brahma is talking about, he said, 
one doesn't have to change their position. They can stay in whatever position they're in. If they're a grihasta, they can stay a grihasta. If they're brahmachari, they can stay brahmachari. But they need to hear about Krishna. They need to hear about Krishna from the devotee, from the pure devotee who, who practices Krishna consciousness. So Lord Chaitanya, when he heard this verse, he said, oh yes, he said, this is very nice. He said, this is, this is real pure devotion. And so then Lord Chaitanya went on to discuss this, to go further with Ramananda Rai, to discuss more about pure devotion to Krishna. So Krishna consciousness is meant for this, it's meant for cultivating pure devotion. We're following the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya taught Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, we're following their teachings. We're not just only devotee of Krishna, we follow Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya is teaching us how to worship Krishna. Sorry, my voice break. I couldn't hear properly. I said, we're not only devoted to Krishna, we have to follow the worship of Krishna as taught by Lord Chaitanya.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, we were we were explaining about how we don't only worship Krishna, but we have to worship Krishna according to the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Where's the translator? Sorry, my internet is not connected. Are you ready? Yes, I am. So I'm explaining. When we worship Krishna, we have to worship Krishna according to teaching of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we don't just only worship Lord Chaitanya. There are many devotees of many people worship Lord Chaitanya, but we follow the teaching of Lord Chaitanya as taught to Rupa Goswami. And we are following Lord Ch Rupa Goswami through our own founder Acharya A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So we have to understand the importance of worshipping Krishna through the disciplic succession. So this lockdown has given everybody a chance to think more deeply about the importance of spiritual life. We can see so much suffering because of the lockdown. People, there's so much suffering, there's been so much suffering around the world. So that suffering is a punishment. It's a punishment, just like when God, when we do something wrong, we get punished. And so the same way, when the Supreme Lord, when the Supreme Lord is not happy with us, He punishes us. Because we've done, we've been doing so many sinful things. We've had so, we've seen so many animals killed. The cows have been killed, and so many. So we've done so many bad things to the planet. We put so many dirty things in all the rivers, all the rivers were full of garbage. And we, we took so much good land, which was good land there for farming, to build factories and to do stupid things with the, the land. Thank 
कचरा पैदा भो है हमें तस्त काम कर पवित्र भूमि And we've been drilling in the ground and in the sea to take the oil out from the planet. So just like if you go to somebody's house, if you go to somebody's house, and you 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 know they they give you nice food and they give you a lot of comfort and take take very good care of you. You you want to thank the owner who takes care of you. You say, "Oh, thank you so much. You know, you give me so nice. You took care of me so nicely. I'm so grateful to you." So the same way we come to this planet, we live on this planet. We don't think who's give, who does it, who does everything belong to, whose land is it, whose whose water is it, who's providing everything for us. We don't think. We just only enjoy. So we're meant to do sacrifice, yagna vai Vishnu. We're meant to perform sacrifice for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, because it's all His property. But we've only been taking just for our own enjoyment, and we didn't thank anybody. We didn't offer any yagya. So now we're suffering. We're getting punished. We deserve it. We get we get we get what we deserve. And if we we can understand this suffering is the arrangement of Krishna, we can also understand that if we go, if we do good, we can be rewarded. When we act in the proper way, when we do things in the proper manner, and we recognize God as the proprietor. He will be pleased. He will reward us. And the, the result is we can actually get out of this material world. This world is the place where we get punished. There's no real enjoyment here in this material world because everything is so temporary and it all finishes with death. The young body grows old very quickly. And when you get old, then you get disease, and then you die. Nobody likes these things. This is the punishment of the material world. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says. The great souls who are yogis in devotion, they never come back to this material world. 
The great souls who are yogis in devotion, they, they never come back to this world because they know this is a place of death. This is a temporary place of birth and death. So devotees should think, there's, there's suffering here and getting punished here, I'll change my life, I'll do good, I'll get rewarded. What is the reward? The reward is we get out of this material world, out of samsara, and we get into the spiritual world, into the Vaikuntha, into Goloka, into the place of eternal life. So, we have to know how to make proper use of this human life. So this lockdown is a wonderful chance for all of us to ask, who am I? Why am I here? Why am I suffering? I want to enjoy. Where can I enjoy? We can enjoy in the spiritual world. We cannot enjoy really here, not in this place. So when a devotee suffers, a devotee sees this as Krishna's mercy, that Krishna is very kind to me. Hmm. Krishna says, when I am very merciful to someone, I take away all their enjoyment. In that helpless condition, they surrender to me. And there's a nice verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam says, if one tolerates all the difficulties but goes on with devotional service, then he becomes qualified to become devotee. So we should all think very clearly about our situation here at this time. We should think how kind Lord Krishna is that he has given us so much difficulty, so much trouble. He's taken away everything from us. Hmm. 
कृपा कर दी यो बेला में भगवान ने हमें सी सब लेख मत एंड आई एम स्टक इन माई हाउस आई हेव नो वेर टू गो आई कैन गो एनी वेर And all I've got is my Japa Mala and my Bhagavad Gita. Oh, we're very lucky, very very lucky. Krishna is so kind. So we want to take advantage of this situation to become more conscious of Krishna. Okay, are there any questions? Does everybody understand? Everybody agree that the, this lockdown, this lockdown is Krishna's mercy. अरे सब पहले यो बात मैं सहमत गर्न हूँ जैसे कि गर्न हूँ ना अरे कि यो जो लॉकडाउन को समय था यो सिर्फ भगवान ने हमें लाइक कृपा करने वाले को अरे यो बात मैं सहमत हूँ ना उनसे अरे कि उन्होंने ना अरे नो बिजनेस नो मनी अरे कौन से कौन से को के काम बिजनेस चाइना अरे कौन से को पुलिस अपनी आम नहीं कृष्ण भगवान मत Um, my uh, Bhagat Dharma Prabhu is requesting that there is some uh, more time, and if my you are convenient, you can give a little more class if you are only convenient. Please. No, okay. And so anyway, we we want everyone to understand how Krishna's mercy appears in different ways. And my dear, what is Janat? What is Bhagat Dharma Janat? So we talk about that. भगवान जो व्यक्ति हो जो So if God has got ten arms. He wants to take. If he wants to take from us, he can take everything. And if he wants to give something with ten arms, he can give so much. We have only got two arms. What can we hold? He, he can give us so much if he wants. So we have to understand how the Lord works. We have to understand. He has a plan. He has a plan for all of us, and he, the plan is to help us all become God conscious. होली ने अंतर साल बोला हुआ तो ये आउटरी द्वारा उन्होंने बोला कि सच्चाई तो ना प्रभु 
चैतन्य महाप्रभु भाई भगवान को युग धर्म And Lord Chaitanya predicted the holy name would be chanted all over the world, every town and village, and we're seeing it happen. So that, that is very pleasing to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at least the chanting is being spread everywhere. But we have to teach everyone also more, we have to not only teach them the chanting, we have to teach them to understand the message of Krishna. How to surrender to Krishna? How to become a devotee? Of course, there are different kinds of devotees. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes about different people who surrender to him. Lord Krishna describes four kinds of people who surrender to him. Somebody comes in distress, somebody comes in search of wealth, somebody comes out of curiosity, and somebody comes in search of knowledge. What happened? Hare Krishna, I think see is logon. Okay, come, come in again. What's she doing? Are you okay? Yes, yes, I am. So I said four kinds of people come to Krishna to surrender for different reasons. A lot of people come in distress. Just like Gajendra, the elephant was in distress. The crocodile had got the foot of Gajendra and he wouldn't let go. And Gajendra was in a lot of trouble. He was fighting, he was fighting, trying to get free, but the crocodile was at home, he was in the water, and the water is the home of the crocodile. So finally Gajendra surrendered to Krishna. He'd learned the mantra in his previous life. Though now we should all be learning mantras. This is a very good time. With the lockdown, we can recite many mantras. Mm. 
Of course, Hare Krishna mantra is very good, but there's many other prayers, nice mantras, nice ways to worship the Lord. So Gajendra, in his previous life, he had been a king. He'd been a great saint, but he made some offense and he got cursed to become an elephant. So in his previous life he had learned some mantras how to worship the Lord. So when the crocodile had his foot, then he, he remembered that prayer he used to offer to the Lord. And the Lord came and saved him from the crocodile. And then Dhruva Maharaj, he wanted money, so he, wa he wanted a kingdom, he wanted wealth, and he went to the forest to find God. And he found him in six months, the Lord came there. So you want money, you can, you know, you can worship God. He, if, you, if, you're, if you're very determined, He can give you money if that's what you want. People think, oh, if I get money, all my problems are solved. No, your problems begin. The more you get money, the more you have problems. And so when Dhruva Maharaj got his wish, he said, no, no, I don't want it. But Krishna told him, he said, no, you're going to take it now. You prayed for it, now you're going to take it. And so because of this, Dhruva Maharaj should sustain the material world for a long time. He couldn't go back to Godhead for a long time. So we should be very careful what we desire when we chant Hare Krishna. Most people come in distress. Queen Kunti was in distress, but her distress was very good. Queen Kunti had so many troubles because her sons, the Pandavas, they were always trying to be killed, they were trying to kill them. Her sons, the Pandavas, they tried to kill them. They had the battle of Kurukshetra, tried to kill them. They put them in the house of Shelak, they set it on fire, they tried to burn them. They'd give poison to Bhima. 
They did so many things to try to kill the sons of Kunti. So Kunti suffered a lot, but she said all of the suffering it was good because I could remember Krishna more. And she said, the more I remember Krishna, the more I know I will not be seeing again birth and death or get out of the birth and death. So we are so fortunate to have the human body in the earth planet. This is the best place. If we were in the heavenly planets, it's not so good. If we were in hell, it's not good. Heavenly planets, there's too much sense gratification, too much comfort. Too much enjoyment. So we get so attached to the comfort, the luxury. We, if we go to heaven, we don't want to become Krishna conscious. We just want to stay there. And you stay there a long time, but still you have to leave it. So demigods, difficult for them to go back to Godhead. They have to wait for the end of the life of Brahma. Maybe at the end of the life of Brahma, maybe they can go back to Godhead. Just now Brahma is about in the middle of his life. He's about 50 or 52 years old. So he has still a long time to live. Brahma lives for 100 years. Right, and every year 12 months, and every month 30 days, and one day has uh, 1,000 cycles, 1,000 Divya Yugas. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, the Hashra Yuga Paryantam Aharyat Brahman Ovidu. That 1000 ages taken together is one day of Brahma. And one, there's one day, then there's one night, the same duration as the day. Yeah, and with the Kali Yuga, this one Kali Yuga, 432,000 years. Child life. 432,000. Child life. Thirty-two thousand. 
tôi tư về cho à, à, yêu yêu tranh rồi Chạm lại tí xa 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 The, the Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, then Kali Yuga. Yeah. Right? And there's one thousand of these four ages. And that's just one day of Brahma. So just imagine the life of Brahma, how many years, millions and billions and billions of years. So you have to stay in the material world a long time. We, we want you to understand, if we become Krishna conscious now and this time by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and the chanting of the Holy Name, we can get out of the material world, we can go back to Godhead. We don't have to wait for the end of Brahma's life. <laughs> It's the only way to get out. The, the demigods, they can't get out. They have to come down here to join in the Sankirtan, to take the mercy of Lord Chaitanya to go back to Godhead. So the Sankirtan movement is very important, very powerful. We should take advantage to join the Sankirtan. If we go to Vaikuntha and Vaikuntha, all the residents in Vaikuntha, they're engaging, they do Sankirtan, they're all chanting the holy name. It's so very important, everyone should learn to chant the holy name, have nice kirtan every day in your home. We you want to be chanting the holy name and experiencing an awakening of our Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is so easy thing, so easy for easy to perform. But we're so stubborn, we're so lazy, we won't do it.
Hare Krishna. Back again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What about our translate? I will invite them. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I, I was explaining how Krishna describes the great mercy of the Sankirtan movement in the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Raja Vidya Raja Goyam Pavitra Mitamutamam Prapyak Shavagamam Dharmyam Susukam Kartamavyayam This knowledge is the king of knowledge, the most confidential knowledge. It is directly experienced how we become joyful and how we become purified. Other processes you have to suffer, so painful, so difficult. Just like if you do yoga, so much difficulty, so much trouble, pains in the body, pains in the legs, aching, so much practice. Now if you do meditation, you have to sit, you have to sit still, you can't move, your body aches. But Krishna consciousness is just chanting and dancing, ecstasy from beginning to end. And if we just take prasadam, then we, we can experience so much wonderful bliss. Yeah, Prabhupada, he said, just by taking prasadam, we can go back to God. Hey, he took a sweet ball, put it in his mouth. So nobody else has a process like Krishna consciousness. It's so sublime, it's so joyful. And so we should, we want to take full advantage of this mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Yeah, and in other ages there was also the chanting of the holy name. But in other ages people were so proud they didn't like to chant the holy name. Yeah, 
sometimes people think, oh, this chanting, this is just emotional, this is just sentimental, this is not real spiritual. But if, if you read the Brihad Bhagavadam Rita, which is a book by Sanatana Goswami, he describes how this one man, Gop Kumar from the Govardhan, he went to Vaikuntha and he met the Vaikuntha and they were all doing Sankirtan. People in Vaikuntha don't sit and meditate, they do Sankirtan. People in Vaikuntha, they don't do Hatha Yoga. No, they're all chanting the holy name and they're engaging in the service of the Lord. And they're glorifying, they're speaking the glories of the Lord. So this is very important activity for devotees. When we come together that we want to hear about Krishna, we want to discuss topics of Krishna. Lord Kapila says, Satam prasanga mama virya samvido bhavanti ritkarana rasayana kata taj joshana jyash apavarga vartmani shradharatir bhaktir nukramishyati. Lord Kapila telling his mother, the importance of hearing about Krishna in the association of devotees. Yeah, Lord Kapila's mother Devahuti, her husband Kadama had gone away, taken sannyas, he left home, left her alone. All right, you get a husband, he's not going to stay with you forever, he's going to leave you one day. Husband, either he'll take sannyas or he's going to die. One way or another, he will leave you. So Devahuti was troubled in her mind that my husband gone away and left me, what to do? So she was fortunate because she has a son and her son is the incarnation of God, Kapila. So Lord Kapila told his mother, he said, attachment for the material is the cause of the greatest bondage. Uh, 
यो भौतिक संसारमा आसक्ति लिएर आउँछ अनि कुनै न कुनै व्यक्ति सँग यसरी आसक्त भयो भने यो भौतिक संसारमा तपाईँलाई जोडेर राख्छ But the same attachment, if you apply it to the spiritual, that can be the greatest benefit. So Lord Kapila told his mother, he said, you have to become attached to a sadhu. Yeah, don't just be attached to your husband, you have to become attached to a sadhu. The sadhu is the one who is going to give you Krishna consciousness. How to recognize a sadhu? It's not just only, not just the beard, the big bee should have a big beard or he should have saffron dress, that's not the sadhu. You know, pe people, they think sadhu means somebody with a big beard or, you know, he's got powerful eyes, he can control you. They think, oh, he's a powerful sadhu. That's not the real sadhu. You have to hear from the sadhu. I when mean, you hear that the, the words of the sadhu, they can change us. Just just like Prabhupada went to, when he first met his spiritual master, he didn't know, of course, he was his spiritual master. When Prabhupada came there, he went to see Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, and immediately Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, Why don't you teach the message of Lord Chaitanya all over the world? <laughs> And Prabhupada said at that time I was a follower of Gandhi and I, saw, I told him, I said, well, our country, India, is not independent yet. We have to get independence. When we get independence, then we can preach the message of Lord Chaitanya. But Bhakti Siddhanta did not accept. He said, no, this is not true. He said, Krishna consciousness is more important. It cannot wait for some political adjustment. Devotional service does not depend on anything material. We can be Krishna conscious anywhere, in any condition. Srimad Bhagavatam describes about the child in the womb of the mother. 
and how the child in the womb of the mother can pray to Krishna. We may wonder how could the child be Krishna conscious in the womb? Doesn't you don't need all the paraphernalia? You can be Krishna conscious. You just have to control your mind. Narayana Parasarve Nakutaschanya Vibhyate Swarga Pavarga Narakesh Vapitu Yatadashana. One who is surrendered to the Lord, they don't see any difference between hell and heaven and liberation. So Lord Kapila told his mother, you have, to be, you have to get attached to a sadhu, you have to find the right sadhu with the qualities of the sadhu. And you don't judge the sadhu just by the dress or just by the ashram. You don't judge the sadhu by his eyes or the skin. You have to hear and then you, if you hear properly, you have to become convinced. So Lord Kapila told his mother, topics of Lord Krishna, when heard in the association of devotees, very pleasing to the ear and to the heart. By hearing in the association of devotees, then we become liberated and then we awaken real knowledge and devotion. So we want to cultivate our devotion for Krishna. It's by devotion we can know Krishna, not on anything else. If we cultivate knowledge, it takes a very long time, very slow process. But if we cultivate devotion, and quickly we can come to understand the truth. And where there's genuine devotion, there will be also knowledge and detachment. Gyan and Vairag, they automatically follow wherever there is bhakti. So one who is a devotee, he also knows about Krishna and he's also detached from the material world. So we want to understand the science of Krishna consciousness. It's very, 
very important for human life. Human life is meant for this knowledge. Prahlad Maharaj said, Kumaracharit Pragno Dharmam Bhagavatam. Actually, we should begin our study of this knowledge from the age of five when we are young children. If you get the right education, that's a good education. From the beginning of life, you learn about Krishna consciousness. That's a very good birth, a fortunate birth. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it describes when one is actually fortunate, then he contacts the spiritual master, he gets the seat of devotion. It's very rare. It doesn't happen very often. It's very special. We give the example, just like there's, there's a fish sw swimming in the bottom of the sea and the ocean is so big and on the surface of the ocean there's one piece of wood. So that fish is in the bottom of the sea and he comes up and he comes up and he puts his nose right through the hole in the wood. There's a one piece of wood floating on the ocean and in the middle of that piece of wood there's one hole and the fish puts his nose right through that hole in the wood. It's very rare. So it's very rare to get the human birth. Just to get human birth, there's eight million, there's eighty-four like species of life. We're very fortunate to get a human birth. But we're even more fortunate because we get the association of devotees. There are so many human beings, but they don't all have the association of devotees. Only fortunate souls have got association with devotees. In the association of devotees, they have a chance to become Krishna conscious, to get out of the material world. Everyone has got a mother and father, every living entity, even the snakes and the dogs, they've all got mothers and fathers. 
Mother pig, father pig, all the different living entities, they all have their parents. So just to have your parents, that is not something, they're just not so special thing. But one who is fortunate, they've got the spiritual teacher, they've got the guru, by the grace of the guru they get Krishna. And because the guru is going to teach the, the devotee about how to do bhakti yoga, how to practice, how to water, the, he's going to plant the seed of devotion in their heart and then teach them how to water that seed. Right, the watering process is hearing and chanting. We have to water regularly. Now we are seeing, you want to grow some vegetables, you have to water, you have to take care of them, you have to make sure the weeds don't grow. When you pour the water, then the weeds also grow. So we have to pull out the weeds. We have to, we have to be careful which one is the weed and which one is the seed of bhakti. Just like there's a story about the man had the fever, so they brought the doctor to treat the, per the person with the fever. So doctor came, gave him an injection and then patient died. So they said, oh, he's, he's, he's dead. But the doctor said, well, fever's gone, no more fever. <laughs> so sometimes people are like that, they go in the garden, they pull out all, everything, they pull out all the plants and all the seeds, they don't just pull out the weeds, they pull up everything. They didn't know what was the plant and what was the weed. So we have to know what are the weeds. What the, the weeds are all the sinful activities, all the bad things, bad habits which we have. Just like now it's lockdown, so many people, they're watching movies. They sit and they watch the Bollywood movie every day. 
अनि जस कोई लकडाउन चल रही है अनि सब पहले क्या कर सकते हैं ऐसा बंदा खेरी बस इरा बॉलीवुड बॉलीवुड को पिक्चर ऐ रही है ना अनि and they watch one movie after another movie and uh, this goes on every day more and more watching movies and in this way they waste a human life and they put so much garbage in their mind so we have, we have to be very careful how we use our human our time Chanaka Pandit said time is the most valuable thing. You have to use it very carefully. You can buy gold, but you cannot buy time. So we want to use our time very carefully for the service of Lord Krishna. Okay, so we will stop here today, I think. Any question? Nothing? I know you people. Maya uh, says one question from Nemai Prabhuji. Yeah. From Chaam. Yeah. Nemai. Bhakti ko lagi, bhakti ma pragati garna ko lagi, sab bhanda sajilo ra saral upaya kei cha. Maya is asking that to come with bhakti, what is the easiest process and very. Uh, to, to get um to get progression in bhakti, what is the easiest? Ani sajilo ani. Sajilo sadhana kya sabani? What is the easiest sadhana? Maya is asking. To get progression in bhakti, what is the easiest uh, sadhana we should follow? Well, you should chant the holy name. That's the easiest sadhana. You do Hari Nam Sankirtan. That's the easiest process. It's the most joyful and it's the best way, easiest way to make progress. You have to do the Sankirtan, you have to have the chanting of the holy name. Uh, people do, they have the deity, they do the puja, and they do the, they do the, they, they maybe read the book, but the best thing is to do Sankirtan. Kalir dosha nidhi rajana stihe ko mahat guna krishna kirtana deva krishna shya mukta sangha parambat brajat. The age of Kali is full of faults. But one good thing, simply by chanting the holy name, you can get all perfection. So everyone should join the Sankirtan as soon as possible. Kali Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Pravartan 
In the Kali Yuga, the process is Sankirtan. The Yuga Dharma is Sankirtan. You just need to get the Krishna Shakti, you just need the energy of Krishna, then you can get everyone to join, to take part. Lord Chaitanya spent most of his time just doing Sankirtan. He only discussed philosophy with a few people, but most of the time, Sankirtan. You want your home to be peaceful? Do Sankirtan at home. Get everybody to come and join in, sit and chant. You ask them to chant Japa, maybe difficult. But Sankirtan, very easy. Okay. Okay, any other question? There's one more question. Yeah? Your job were in a cotton spoon, and your job were so there is a question from Nanda Sutta Prabhu. He's asking that many of the times, uh, while um, uh, listening to the lecture, some also chant. So how is it correlated? Is it good to chant or while listening to the lecture or it's not is asking that question, Maharaj? Well, if you're chanting, then you're not listening to the lecture. You can't do two things at one time. You have to decide what you want to do. Either you want to hear the lecture or you want to chant. You can't do both. There's one more when there is a death in a person's house, we're not allowed 13 days we have to do some rituals without eating. Uh, at that process, we're not allowed to, the Nepal, according to Nepali custom, they're not allowed to enter the deity room or do the seva service, anything. So he's asking that on the, like for some people, uh, they just have to do five days, but the original custom is for 13 days. So while the thirteen days is going on, he finish his uh, ritual on the fifth day. Does he have to continue uh, 
without doing the service or can he, can he continue on the fifth day itself? Yeah, he can continue on the fifth day. Okay, Maharaj. Actually, devotee, for devotees, you see, devotees are transcendental. This is, oh, 